all right, welcome to part two of respiratory 2140-2160 equipment for BiPAP. Um, I just kind of changed our view so you could actually see the screen of the Philips Respironics V60. So down here you can see yellow means we're on standby, but we're plugged in, ready to go. We can see our battery status and alarms here. So we're going to turn it on with the power button since we're already plugged in and good to go. All right, so this would be kind of the main screen, what was on before. So most important, silence button. <laughs> and then this will tell you, we'll start at the top. Silence button, alarm reset, just clears all of your alarms and turns the silence off. And then this tells you the severity of the alarm. If it's just like maybe your patient was breathing a little bit fast, breathing a little bit slow, um, or, oh, and then that's another way you can clear it. Another feature is if you, 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 this is touch, a touch dial, so you can use this to make setting changes after selecting and then use the green button to actually select. Along the top here we can see inhalation and exhalation or timed. Timed is a delivered breath from the machine. The patient's respiratory rate tidal volume, and these are bad volumes right now because, well, we don't have anything attached. Um, our minute volume, remember minute volume is rate times tidal volume. PIP, this is our measured peak inspiratory pressure. The leak, so different things can affect leaks, such as um, how the patient's wearing the mask, the fit of the mask, the size of the mask, and of other different things such as potential facial trauma and most commonly what you'll see is facial hair. This is the percent of the patient triggered. So right now our patient isn't breathing at all because we don't have a patient. But um, we can tell if our patient is breathing 100% they're doing their full ventilation on their own. And then this is our um, eye time to total rate. Um, percentage. Down here is a 100% oxygenation. If your patient is desatting or just not doing well, you can hit this and it will give two minutes of a 100% FiO2. And then you can give two more minutes is what that means. This is the little timer of how long you have to give. We're giving oxygen and then you can cancel here. Down, so this is what the patient is doing, what you're reading of your patient. These are different flow meters, I mean, excuse me, different waveforms. And then down here are the settings you put in. So we talked about the settings already, but I do want to talk about modes. So CPAP is one continuous pressure. This is just one pressure we're delivering to our patient. So this is, I'm going to... See if I can put this in standby so it's a little more quiet for you guys. So the standby button basically makes it so we don't turn the machine all the way off, but that it's just in a state of readiness. So it's ready to go whenever. So modes, back to our modes. CPAP is one continuous pressure. So we can adjust this. Therapeutic starts at 10 centimeters of water pressure, but it can be anywhere that's comfortable for your patient. So you can use this for obstructive sleep apnea, pulmonary recruitment, anything that they may need one continuous pressure. You can put a ramp on or not. So what a ramp does is it gradually um, and you can see the time here, how long it takes to reach that pressure. So it would take 35 minutes to reach that pressure. Most of the time, I don't set a ramp unless the patient is used to it. Otherwise, a, a lot of patients feel a little bit like they're suffocating. And then C-Flex, most of the time we set that at two. That is how much the patient has to work in order to get that breath in. And then we have our FiO2. So once you have your settings in here on the bottom, you would activate the mode. 
Other modes include batch ST, so that stands for spontaneous time. This is our classic BiPAP setting. So this was where we would set our IPAP, our EPAP, our rate, iTime, rise, all that. And then again, activate batch change. That just means it will activate all these settings you put in to be reading for the patient. Um, other modes, PCV is pressure control ventilation. So this, if it's a really, really glum day in the hospital, can be used as a ventilator. This is where you would go to run this piece of equipment as you would a ventilator. And then finally is AVAPS. And what AVAPS is, is a targeted volume control. So it act AVAPS, excuse me, stands for Average Volume Assured Pressure Support. So your patient is trying to, the machine is trying to match this tidal volume that you set right here, whatever it may be. Um, and then the patient can, and then we're controlling the pressures here because we are a pressure regulated machine. But your patient can, can control whatever flow they want. Um, so it can be very comfortable while shooting for a specific tidal volume. It's not commonly used in this area, but it's good to be aware of. Um, some other features. So you can come down here and that will bring you back to your home screen settings. Here are your alarms. You have your high and low rate, your high and low tidal volume, high inspiratory pressure, low inspiratory pressure, low minute volume, and time at low inspiratory pressure. So basically that's just a disconnect alarm. So after 30 seconds of being disconnected, um, our ventilator will, excuse me, our BiPAP will alarm that we are at, we are disconnected. And then finally our menu, we can adjust the brightness, the loudness. Um, most importantly, I wanna go to mask and ports. A lot of masks will have a number on it that coordinates with the BiPAP, the specific BiPAP, and you will try to match your mask with the number on it. Um, if you do not know, it's okay to select other and accept if you do not know. So since we have this port, you'll see we have our exhalation port that matches. Um, you will adjust it based on what your facility uses for the adapter for an exhalation port. And then we can screen lock if for some reason maybe we have a nosy family member or additional ventilator info that you may need. I highly doubt you will. So the biggest ones that you do is your home screen and then you can go in and you can make the, all the adjustments you need. And then alarms to put your patient in a safe zone for that. Your modes, if you need to change your modes. Menu for your mask. And then standby to place your equipment in standby. So that's the screen. Um, I know this wasn't as thorough as it could be, but come with questions. Write down questions you have. I know this is, if this is 2140, this is kind of a lot of an introduction. This is a big step into mechanical ventilation. So make sure you ask lots of questions, get involved and get hands on with the equipment. Um, and a lot of those settings will make more sense after watching the theory video. So go back and refer to that. Okay, thanks guys.